Hey guys, welcome to Radiation Test. And what I've did here is put together a presentation to look at accidents and major incidents with nuclear power generation technology in the last 52 years. And this presentation excludes nuclear submarine disasters, and there was quite a few of those too. But we'll get right with it. July 1959, the Santa Susana Field Laboratory in California. The sodium reactor experiment suffered a serious incident causing damage to the reactor and the controlled release of radioactive gas into the atmosphere. Technical analysis of the incident asserts a much greater release of radioactivity than Three Mile Island. And the thing is a disaster here, guys, is I'm sure you're all familiar with Three Mile Island because it's been labeled the worst disaster in American history. And of course that's a lie. <clears throat> the worst disaster was this uh, sodium reactor experiment in uh, Simi Valley, California. January 3rd, 1961, Idaho Falls, Idaho, explosion at SL-1 National Reactor Testing Station. All three operators were killed when a rod was removed too far, causing a criticality surge and a steam explosion. October 5th, 1966, Frenchtown Charter Township, Michigan, partial core meltdown of the Fermi-1 reactor at the Enrico Fermi Nuclear Generating Station. December 7th, 1975, Greifswald, East Germany, electrical air causes fire in the main trough that destroys control lines and five main coolant pumps. Jeslovsky, Bohinsk, Czechoslovakia, January 5th, 1976, a malfunction during fuel replacement, a fuel rod ejected from the reactor. February 22nd, 1977, at that same reactor in Czechoslovakia, uh, severe corrosion of reactor and rela release of radioactivity into the plant caused the entire plant to be decommissioned. March 28, 1979, Middleton, Pennsylvania, loss of coolant and parcel core melt down at Three Mile Island. Now at Three Mile Island, guys, uh, you'll hear one side, usually the nuclear industry, saying, that, oh, there was no, no one was harmed, no one got sick from it. Uh, I don't believe that. On the other end, you can look at some of the other reports from medical doctors and some other folks out there. And there's a, if you go out past five years looking at the cancer rate, uh, it did cause a significant increase in cancer, for especially for the local communities. September 15th, 1984, Athens, Alabama. Safety violations, operator error, and design problems for six-year outage at the Browns Ferry Unit. Now, safety violations. What would that be? Well, you think about this, guys. What this is, is we have the corporatists, all these big corporations that are running. They run all kinds of different industries, but they've taken this nuclear power technology, and they have the same attitude toward it as they do everything. Uh, profit. Profit above all else. You know, whenever you do that with uh, the oil or some of these other industries, like toys that come from uh, overseas that are dangerous, well, that's bad stuff too, guys, but whenever you start having that attitude and those behaviors on with uh, this type of technology, you're talking about a disaster that could wipe an entire nation off the face of the earth. I just can't believe it. It's, it's mind-boggling what's going on. March 9th, 1985, Athens, Alabama. Instrumentation system malfunction during startup, which led to suspension of operations at all three Browns Ferry units. April 11th, 1986, Plymouth, Massachusetts, reoccurring equipment problems force emergency shutdown of Boston Edison Pilgrim nuclear power plant. April 26th, Pripyat, Ukraine, the Chernobyl disaster. 300,000 people evacuated from Kiev and uh, radioactive material dispersed around the globe. May 4th, 1986, Hem Juntrop, Germany. Experimental THTR-300 reactor releases fission products into the surrounding area. Now, how many people have heard of uh, the Hem Juntrop, Germany experiment that released uh, all these dangerous isotopes into the community? You know, the nuclear power industry is a global, global power. It's over not just the U.S. government, the Japanese government. These people that are running this stuff, uh, they're running it in all these various countries. And you can see the same attitude in every country. Sweep it under the rug. March 31st, 1987, Delta, Pennsylvania. 
The Peach Bottom Units 2 and 3 shut down due to cooling malfunctions and unexplained equipment problems. December 19, 1987, Lycoming, New York. Malfunctions forced Niagara Mohawk Power Corporation to shut down 9 Mile Point Unit 1. March 17, 1989, Lesby, Maryland. Inspections at Calvert Cliff Units 1 and 2 reveal cracks in pressurized heater sleeves, uh, forcing the extended shutdowns. That's something else I want to point out to you guys. Uh, a lot of these reactors were designed in the 60s. And a nuclear reactor is a workhorse, man. It has It's generating all this electricity. It has tons of heat. There's a lot of mechanical parts in there. Uh, and over time, it wears out, just like anything else. And the NRC in the United States keeps extending the license for these old re reactors out to 20 and 40 years. I mean, that's a recipe for disaster. And I hope it never happens in America or any other country, but... It makes common sense to me, guys, that it's, it's just only a matter of time. It's going to happen. And the older these reactors get, uh, the more likely it is to happen. February 20th, 1996, Westford, Connecticut. Leaking valve forces shutdown in Millstone Nuclear Power Plant Units 1 and 2. Multiple equipment failures found. Crystal River, Florida. Balance of plant equipment malfunction forces shutdown and extensive repairs at Crystal River Unit 3. Now, I'm going to go back to that one one more time. I believe the Crystal River plant, that's the one where recently they found like a 40-foot crack in the containment vessel. Uh, yeah, guys, uh, that points out that uh, aging reactors and the containment vessels, uh, uh, maybe you should decommission them and build new ones. I don't know. Don't build any, maybe, huh? September 30th, 1999. Ibaraki Prefecture, Japan. Tokimura nuclear accident killed two workers and exposed one more to radiation levels above permissible limits. February 16th, 2002. Oak Harbor, Ohio. Severe corrosion of control rod forces 24-month outage of the Davis-Bessie reactor. December 22nd, 2003. Honeywell Uranium Hexafluoride Processing Facility in Metropolis, Illinois. An accidental release of uranium hexafluoride occurred lasting approximately 45 minutes. This is another one of those incidents that was uh, sweeped under the rug. Now, Metropolis, Illinois isn't far from where I live. And in 2003 when this ex accident happened, I never heard anything about it. It wasn't in the news anywhere. Uh, sweep it under the rug. Don't let anybody know. Don't cause panic, they say. Uh, instead, let them eat uranium. February 20th, 2006. LaSalle County Nuclear Generating Station in Northern Illinois. Workers were shutting down Unit 1 for refueling when the plant's turbine control system malfunctioned, scramming the reactor. August 9th, 2004. The Fuki Prefecture, Japan... A steam explosion at the Mihama nuclear power plant killed four workers and injured seven more. March 11, 2011, the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear disaster. Which, if you guys get looking in the news, I know I've been reading a lot about it, and I hear a lot of these news stories saying that Fukushima, is it's the worst uh, accident since Chernobyl. Uh, they keep saying that. Since Chernobyl. Uh, guys, this thing is far worse than Chernobyl. A Chernobyl was uh, out of control for about 10 days, and then they had it uh, entombed. And that disaster still hasn't come to an end. It's still going on. Uh, look at this Fukushima stuff, guys. These things have been melting down. It's going to be a year, not too much longer. And uh, I think, the, I read recently, the Japanese government has like a 40-year plan to decommission the plant. And at the, this whole time, there's going to be releases of uh, strontium, cesium, and a witch's brew of other radioisotopes going into the ocean because uh, there, there's a still de there's still debate whether or not the China syndrome has happened but there is no debate as to whether the containments are leaking water out the sides now as they pour this water in it's going to run out the sides it's going to get into the ocean into the groundwater and it's going to work its way up the food chain so let's sum this thing up guys uh, accidents and incidents. Since the 1959, there have been 23 accidents or major incidents involving nuclear reactors. These figures exclude nuclear submarine disasters. 
the major accidents that we know about, there might be other ones that we just don't know about because they hit them so well. Who knows? Uh, July 13th, 1959, Simi Valley nuclear disaster. That was with the uh, sodium uh, the sodium reactor experiment. March 28th, 1979, Three Mile Island accident. And, of course, that one was downplayed. The health consequences were downplayed. If you go out past five years and look at the cancer rates, there there's actually a significant uh, cancer increase because of that disaster. April 26th, 1986, the Chernobyl disaster. Well, of course, that one was it wiped out a, an entire, it wiped out the Ukraine pretty much. Uh, March 11th, uh, the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear disaster, which who knows where this one's going, guys? I mean, I, I, I don't know. It looks like the Japanese people are in a lot of trouble, though. So, what can we expect to see? Well, in the future, well, based on these accidents that have happened in the past, if the past uh, repeats itself here, we can expect a, a major nuclear incident every 2.2 years. Now, this is an incident where you're dodging a bullet, guys. You're dodging that bullet. Uh, it almost happened, and they come and saved it in just the nick of time. Uh, maybe there was some releases into the environment that uh, isn't going to wipe out a whole nation, but uh, you dodge the bullet. So we can expect that every 2.2 years. Uh, we can expect a major catastrophe capable of... Uh, uh, wiping out an entire nation every 13 years. So, with those types of numbers, uh, radiation test predicts this. Uh, we predict a major nuclear accident or a major nuclear incident sometime in 2013, and that's one of those incidents where we dodge the bullet. It almost happens, but they just just barely save us. Uh, and then, we, of course, we can expect a major catastrophe like Chernobyl or Fukushima sometime in 2024 so uh you know i get watching you know i like to watch politicians on tv talk and sometimes i go onto the c-span and i watch uh the senators and all that and i've seen several of these senators and it doesn't matter if they're democrat or republican on both sides uh they're talking about how impressive the safety record is with the nuclear with the nuclear industry impressive you know that's nonsense. How's it impressive to have a uh, every 2.2 years you're dodging a bullet with the stuff, and every 13 years you have a major incident, major incident. I mean, that's not impressive to me, guys. So it's a tragedy, guys. But uh, if something's not done, I mean, we have to uh, stop this uh, technology. I mean, through the political process, people need to be informed of what's going on. You need to get involved, and uh, you need to elect politicians, I guess, that will uh, go up against these big corporations, man. And uh, I don't know if that'll work, but uh, that's all we can do, because right now we're at the mercy of these uh, big corporations and their, uh, the power they have to lobby our government officials. And uh, as you can see, and I want to point one more thing out. Uh, what's the difference between uh, Hitler, Stalin, and all these other guys that have murdered millions of people and some of these big corporations that are murdering millions of people by uh, letting uh, all these substances go into the environment and in the food? I mean, I don't really see a difference between them. Uh, they're, they're all killing millions of people. So, I don't know, guys. This is a, a bad subject. Thanks a lot for tuning in to Radiation Test.